you went to John 5.18. <clears throat> in John 5.21, Jesus says, Just as the Father <clears throat> raises the dead and gives them life, so too the Son gives life to whom He wills. So Jesus is the Son who gives life to whomever He wants. But then in 5.25, Someone says closer to the mic. I can't. I don't have a mic. It's a computer. <clears throat> don't worry. They hear you fine. Fine. Five twenty-five. It's uh, Jesus says the hour is coming, and it is now, when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will live. And then in twenty-eight twenty-nine, same chapter five. Just saw chapter five, what he just quoted. In twenty-eight twenty-nine, says the hour is coming when all who are in their graves will hear His voice, the voice of the Son of God, and they will come out. So in this chapter, Jesus said, He the Son gives life, and that He the Son, at the last hour, the hour, He will raise the dead from their graves, from their graves, by the power of His voice. And then John 14, verse 6, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Now, CP, you are the master of the Quran. Can you uh, read for that? Uh, just wait, Sam. Somebody's saying that there is no song. Guys, do you hear, do you hear the brother Sam or no? All right, I don't know before. Yeah, they hear you. They hear you. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. So everyone heard, right? John 5, 21, John 5, 25, John 5, 20, 29, and 14, 6, where Jesus says, He the Son gives life to whom He wills. Jesus said, The hour is coming. The hour is coming where those who are in their graves will hear the voice of the Son of God and come out. And Jesus says, I am the truth. Now, CP. Yes. You're the master of destroying Quran. Muhammad died because he knew you were coming, so he had a heart attack and he died. So, can you read for them Surah Al, I believe it's Hajj, chapter 22, verses 6 to 7. Chapter 22, verses 6 to 7. All right. Well, guys, watch this. CP is going to show you. And like I said, uh, you did a phenomenal job. Your presentation of the deity of Christ was phenomenal. And I'm not just saying it. That's why I said there's no need. I just want to listen. But thank you for having me. I, it's a, it's an honor to serve with you. It's a pleasure, you. my friend. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay, now in chapter 22, verse 6 to 7, does it say, Allah, He is the truth, Al-Haq, yes. and He gives life to the dead? Yes. And does it not say that at the hour, Allah will raise them from their graves? Exactly. But wait, CP, that's what Jesus said. But here, you see, you remember, Sam, I made a video a long time ago, if exactly. you remember it. It's the saying that Allah, He said He is the truth, but Jesus said first He is the truth. Yes. Allah is saying that He is the resurrector, but Jesus says I am the resurrection. If you remember that video, you know this is yeah. many many years ago. So here, yeah. what what Sam is quoting for you is Allah trying to say that He is like Jesus. Hmm. This is the fake God. This is the fake Jesus. Yeah. You know? Yeah. The percent. So for the Christians here, learn these arguments and go back and watch the videos. He did the videos on there. Like, is the Arabic word for resurrector al baith? Is it baith or so? Whatever. Uh, al baith. Yeah, al baith. See, brother. Yeah. I speak Zakir Naik Arabic. <laughs> <laughs> Chapter twenty-two. Anyway, uh. now that's one. You guys see it, right? You. There's no Muslim who can say what Jesus said in John five. That that's a creature who can speak like that. No. Jesus said, "What, brother? You're saying?" You know, Sam. One, one in chapter chapter twenty two, verse number seven, saying that the one who raised people from resurrect people from a grave is God, is Allah. Yes. But isn't it the Quran, the same book, saying in chapter three, verse number forty nine, that yep. Jesus says, "I, I bring the dead. I quake the dead. Read it. This is yes, the sir. Muslim translation, not mine." And I quicken the dead, and then at the end it says by Allah leave. But this is a stupid, you know, statement here because by Allah leave or not, it says I quicken the dead. He didn't say Allah quicken the dead. He said I, right? So 100%. the Quran is a stupid book made by a stupid author trying to copy from the Bible miracles Jesus did, and now he is saying a big fat mistake, exposing him, Muhammad, saying that uh, Jesus says I quicken the dead. If if the one who quickened the dead is Allah, then Jesus would not say, I quickened the dead. Mm -hmm. 100%. You know? you know the Arabic better than anyone. It even says that I create from clay a bird and I breathe into it and it becomes a bird. Be it Allah, by Allah's leave. Like you said, doesn't matter. But for the people who don't know, the people don't know, that verb create is only used of Allah and Jesus. It's never used of anyone else. Only Allah and Jesus are said to create that Arabic verb, only used of them, and Jesus creates the same way Allah created Adam. It says Allah created Adam, 
In one place it says uh, clay, another place says mud, and breathe into Adam, and Adam came to life. Exactly what Jesus did. Create from clay a bird, breathe into it. Now, for the non-Muslims, so they understand the impact. For Jesus to breathe life means he possesses life. He's, he has the breath of life. Because when he breathes, people come to life. But that's something that's only true of God. And the Quran ascribes it to Jesus and only Jesus. So the two things that chapter 3 verse 49 says. Chapter 3 verse 49. Jesus creates breathes life, makes it alive, and raises the dead. Those two things are only said of God and Jesus, no one else. Now again, that's the Quran, but going back to the Bible, I want to, and you know these, you've, you have videos on these, I remember yeah. this, yeah. for the benefit. Another way you can show the Muslims that Jesus is claiming to be God, and CP mentioned it when he says, I am the light of the world. One of the names of Allah is An-Nur, the light, and in Surah 24, 35, Chapter 24, verse 35 of the Quran, it says, Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth. And you ask a Muslim, according to Quran, can anyone claim to be the light of creation? They'll say, stuck for Allah, no way. But then, why are you saying Jesus didn't claim to be God in John 8, 12, when he says, I am the light of the world, something that only God could say, and another title. I just want to give them another title. Yeah. In chapter 57, verse 3, Surah Al-Hadid, Come on, brother. The brother said, chapter 57, verse 3. There it says, Allah is the first and the last. Right? Al-awwal wal akhir. The first and the last. In Revelation 1.17, Revelation 1.17, well, I'm not, I, was, I gave it away. But anyway, Revelation 1.17, John says, When I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. He placed his right hand upon me and said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. But then in verse 18, he says, I am the living one. I was dead, but behold, I live forevermore, and I hold the keys to death and Hades. So Jesus said, I am the first and the last who died and lives forever. Quran says, Allah is the first and the last. And then you go to the book of Isaiah. In the book of Isaiah, by the way, Abdul Hajj, good to see you, brother. I've been missing you. In the book of Isaiah, Isaiah 44, verse 6, there God Yahweh, God, the God, the true God of all, says, I am the first and the last, I am He. And that's in Isaiah 48, verse 12. So in Isaiah, the true God is the first and the last. In the Quran, Muhammad stole the name of the true God, and he gave it to his false God and said, Allah is the first and last. But then Jesus in Revelation 1, 17, 18 says, I am the first and last who died and lives forever. Come on, Muslim, give it up. The Bible says, or <clears throat> quotes Jesus as saying he's God in the flesh. Now, I can stop there for a moment. Uh, Sam, Sam, as long as you mention I am he, but isn't it there is Jesus where he said I am he too? Yeah, all throughout, the, here I'll give you the, the one of the most powerful I am he statements. Yeah. And by the way, just for the people they know, because I write in English and <clears throat> so they can benefit those who don't read Arabic. All this information we're talking about, I have written articles on the website I write for and blog. You'll find the articles there and on my YouTube channel because I can only do English. I'm not good in Arabic. Now, CP is good in Arabic and in English, so he has an advantage over us. But now, let me just give them one. One, to connect the I am right. with the Old Testament. Okay. Deuteronomy 32, verse 39. Deuteronomy 32, verse 39. There it says, See now that I, even I, myself am he. If you read the translation in Greek, because the Hebrew is anihu, anihu. But in Greek, it's the same Greek words used in John. Ego I me. See now that I, even I myself am he. I am he. Greek is ego I me. Same Greek words in John, because John wrote in Greek. But then notice what he says. <clears throat> he goes, I wound and I heal. I, I kill and I make alive. And there's none who can deliver out of my hands. I, make, I kill, I make alive. I wound and I heal. And there's none who can deliver out of my hands. So now notice what the true God says. I am he, and Abdul Halaj who reads the Hebrew, he, he's confirming, amen, good brother in the Lord. I am he, I kill and make alive, I wound and I heal, none can deliver out of my hands. Jesus comes and says, I am he, and I give them everlasting life, which you mentioned, and none can deliver out of my hands. John 10, 27 to 28. Jesus, you know the Old Testament. Yes, I do. 
You know, in the Old Testament, God says, I am he, and none can deliver out of God's hand, and he makes alive. Exactly. But you just said, you, a, a human being, flesh and blood human being standing in front of me, you said, you give everlasting life, and none can deliver out of your hand. Why are you speaking as if you're God? Well, the answer is obvious, right? Yeah. Well, but it doesn't matter really what we say. The Muslims, the, 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 the point today I'm trying to, to make that the Muslims, they refuse what is written there anyway. It doesn't matter if Jesus says, I am God or not. And they accept what Muhammad said. It doesn't matter what Muhammad said. If Muhammad, he put one verse in the Quran saying Jesus is God, they would say it's God. As simple as that. But Muhammad did not say that. As simple as that. This is the whole story. This is why you will not find a Muslim making fun of Jesus being born a virgin. Why? Because Muhammad, he made a verse saying, okay, Mary, she was virgin. So Muslims don't dare to question such a thing. But uh, Sam, I want to ask you here. Sure. What is uh, significant about uh, Jesus uh, being born of a virgin? In Islam, there is no point. Yeah. See, the, the Quran has no answer because Muhammad is taking things that Christians believe, making part of the Quran, and not realizing this destroys him and shows he's a false prophet. And this is another typical Muslim argument that I want to respond on for the English-speaking Christians. They'll tell you, oh, come on, man. Adam born without mother and father. And by the way, recently... I actually had a Muslim named Abdullah Aman on my YouTube channel, and he's very close to giving his life to the Lord. So he brought this up. Come on, Jesus without mother, but Adam is greater without father and mother. So I asked him, I want this, I want the Christians to learn this, because CP already knows this, but for the Christians, so you can use it to see Muslims get saved. I said, okay, Adam's the first man, right? Yeah. Could he have a father or mother? No, because if he had father and mother, then he's not the first man. All right. Eve is the first woman, right? Yeah. Could she have a mother? No. Okay. So Adam had no parents because he's the first man. He can't have parents. Logically, it makes no sense. Then he wouldn't be the first man. So because he's the first man, God created him without parents. But when Jesus is born of Mary, why did he interrupt the normal process of human beings coming into the world through mother and father? But for Jesus, he interrupted that to make sure when Jesus came into the world without a father and a mother, if Jesus isn't truly the Son of God, and this was God's way of showing, God's way of showing the world that this Jesus has no human father because I'm his father and he's truly my son. You see? Yeah. Well, I mean, and even that's what even the angel Gabriel or Jibril alayhi salam told Mary, right? When she told him in Luke 134, how can this be? Seeing, I have known no man, I'm not unchaste, I'm a virgin. And then he answered, the Holy Spirit will overshadow you, will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you, so that the holy thing born will be called the Son of God. See, he's saying, God chose to <clears throat> cause you to conceive the physical body, human nature of Jesus, without sex, so that people will realize this is God's testimony this one is truly my son, which is why no man can say he is his father. Right? Yeah. And so uh, that's the answer. I want to give you the answer. I want, I, I want to add something to what you said. Maybe you can add it in your article. In chapter 25, verse number 54, it says, What does that mean? That Allah, he made it from the water, a human. And he made it lineage by sexual uh, uh, marriage. So every human being, first the human being started from water, mud, dust, then that human being, after Adam, all of them, they established from marriage. Okay, but hold on, there's a mistake here. Isn't it Jesus is not from marriage? 100%. So, not from marriage. so the Quran, and by the way, this is the same verse saying that you can have sexual uh, relationship with your daughter if she is a daughter from illegal marriage. If you go to the interpretation for the verse, where it says, because the, the daughter is not a daughter from a legal marriage, so in Islam, she is not considered as a daughter, so it's lawful for the man to have sex with the daughter and the mother, which is showing the evil of the cult of Islam. But however, however, this verse confirm that every human being after Adam is establishment of relationship of marriage and lineage of marriage. So yes. Jesus, who is not from a lineage of marriage, his lineage will go to who? Exactly, it has to go to God. That's it. 
Yeah, and in fact, I wanted to add to that to confirm it. Folks, uh, and this, when I say it, add to that, it's for the benefit of the people listening, not for CP. CP, I don't say in front of him. He's our teacher. We learn from him. No, right, right. So, no it's the truth. I mean, we give God glory for people like you that he raises because it shows God is almighty and he raises warriors. And you and you're not doing it for fame, obviously. This is you're doing it for the glory of Christ. But if the Lord doesn't come in our lifetime, when they're writing about the history of Christians who refuted Islam, your name will shine brightly by the power of the Holy Spirit for the glory of Jesus Christ. So that's just true. We give God glory for you. We don't give you glory, we give God glory for I you. Mean, Amen. I mean to that. Okay. I just want for their benefit, I want you to see it's ironic in chapter six, verse one oh one, six verse one oh one. Allah says, wonderful originator of the heavens and the earth. How can he have a son seeing he has got no girlfriend? Consort. Okay. You know what's amazing, Christians? Those are, And you know this. If you've been following CP, you know, already know this. You know what's amazing? In, in chapter, I'm, I'm sorry, CP, I love Chapter 3, yeah. verse 47, and chapter 19, verse 20, Mary answers the same way. She says, how can I have a son seeing I have you know, not touched any man. So she gives the same answer that Allah gives. What does Allah say? It's easy for me. You don't need to have a man to have a son. No but easy for Mary is hard for Allah. See, Mary can have a son, no man. But Allah has to have a woman to have a son. So that means Mary is mightier than Allah. Exactly. And not only that, this is a proof that the God of Mary had nothing to do with the God of Muhammad. You know? Yeah. Because one of them, he can make Mary have son without having a, 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 a husband. And the other one saying clearly that even him cannot do it yeah. to himself, not to somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. So, but now I, I tell the Muslim, okay, let's apply your logic. If Allah can only have a son if he has a consort, then that means Mary, her son, Allah has to be the father without sex because I'm going to apply the logic. Okay, Allah, you can only have a son with a girlfriend. Then Mary can only have a son if someone is the father of her son. Since you're the one who caused her to get pregnant without sex, you are responsible for the birth of Jesus, so you are his father, whether you like it or not. Allahu Akbar! If, actually, if we ask Muslim, who is the father of Jesus, what the answer will be? Let us see. I'm, I'm waiting. Okay, everybody have a father. Everybody have a father. There's no way. Anyone coming after Adam, you have a father. Okay, why Jesus? You don't have an, an, an answer for it. Who is the father of Jesus? If you say to me, he have no father, you are being silly, because this is a go against your God teaching. The Quran, as we just showed you, chapter 25, verse 54, says, Everybody have a father. And actually, Muhammad, he said, Call them by the names of their fathers. Which means you cannot call somebody, uh, you can adopt a son and call him by the name of somebody else, right? But by yeah. saying that, now, if I want to call Jesus, I, I, I have to call him, according to Islam, by the name of his father. Okay. I am the son of Adam. Adam is the first man. That's why we called son of Adam. Wonderful. We cannot say Adam the son of etc. because he's not born as you explained. But Jesus who is born, he's a son of who? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, the Quranic logic you can escape it. And I want to add a few more points for their benefit, for their benefit. You can prove that Muhammad did what he accused Christians. If you read the Quran in chapter five, verse 116, Muhammad said that supposedly on the day of judgment, Allah will ask Jesus, did you tell mankind to take you and your mother's two gods besides Allah? Right? So notice the accusation. There are Christians supposedly believe Allah, Jesus, and Mary are three gods, which we don't believe. But I'm going to show you now that Muhammad did that. If you, and CP mentioned it, in chapter 19, verse 19, you guys know this, chapter 19, verse 19, Jesus is said to be faultless, pure, perfect, sinless, pure, sinless, holy, no sin. But then if you go to chapter 3, verse 42, it says, the angels are saying to Mary, Allah has chosen thee and prefer, preferred thee, purified thee, purified thee, and preferred thee above all creatures, uh, of all women, I'm sorry, all women. So notice, Allah purified Mary and chose her above all women. If you read the commentators, they'll tell you that Allah purified Mary because Mary was conceived and she's, she was kept pure without sin. And you know the hadith, I think CPU mentioned it, if not in this session and other sessions, where the hadith says that Satan touches every son or daughter of Adam when they're born except Mary and Jesus. Exactly. So Mary and Jesus, pure and sinless, Satan couldn't touch them. Mary and Jesus, pure and sinless, Satan could not touch them. And Allah made them pure from the time they're conceived until they were taken. Now, here's what's beautiful. If you go to chapter 16, verse 16 of the Quran, 
16 verse 61 and chapter 35 verse 45 of the Quran. It says, if Allah were to punish mankind for their wrongdoing, if Allah were to call into account mankind for their wrongdoing, he would not leave a single creature on the earth. Notice what this means. If you are human, if you are a creature, then you can't help but to sin and do something wrong. That's why Allah would not leave any creature on the earth if he was to punish them for their wrongdoing. But hold on, Jesus and Mary are sinless. They never done anything wrong. They never made any mistake. So if these passages are true, then Jesus and Mary can't be creatures because if they're creatures, then they too would do wrong and Allah would punish them, but he shows them mercy. But the Quran says, no, Jesus never sinned and Mary was pure. So thank you, Mr. Muhammad, that you just turned Mary and Jesus as two gods alongside Allah. Allahu Akbar. Uh, very important point, and we can add to that, uh, Please. Sam. Add it, we, we can add many things, actually. But the, the important is, why it is only Jesus have all those qualifications. Yeah. You see, Muhammad don't have them, and he is supposedly the most beloved prophet for Allah. Muhammad cannot resurrect people from death. Muhammad cannot make the blind see. Muhammad, and the funny, the Muslim, they say, I'm, I'm sure you saw many articles, they say, in the time of Jesus, the Romans were very advanced in uh, in, med in medicine. <laughs> so Allah, he gave him a miracle of healing people. I mean, my friend, we are in the year 2020 and people are dying because of Corona. What advance you are you talking about? <laughs> what advance we are talking about? Advance, why Jesus was giving them medicine? When Jesus, he saw the blind man, he said to him, you go and take this three times a day. <laughs> what does this have to do with medicine? I mean, this is the most stupid, funny, silly. They have a brain of a chicken when they try to refute us. Yeah. Jesus did not give medicine, my friend, so we can say we can call him Dr. Jesus. He did not say, go and eat this three times a day and drink that three or five times a day. He said to the blind, see, and he saw. He said to the man who cannot walk, which one is easier to say? Your sin is forgiven or carry your bed and walk. And Sam, I want you to cover this one. Your sin is yeah. oh, thank forgiven. You. You mentioned that because uh, in Mark 2, and this is found in Mark chapter 2, you can read it, Matthew 9, it's also found in Luke 5. When they saw a par paralyzed man, he said, son, your sins are forgiven. Now, what's beautiful, CP, and if you want to open up the Quran, it's uh, Surah Al-Imran, chapter 3, verse 135. The Jews respond, chapter 3, verse 135 of the Quran. The Jews respond the same way the Quran responds. It says, why did this man speak this way he's blaspheming who can forgive sins but god alone now if you go to chapter 3 verse 135 of the quran it says who can forgive sins except allah or god alone says the same thing chapter 3 verse 135 says the same thing so what did jesus did not say what he did not say no guys let's stuck for allah Rabbil Alameen. let me take shahada no i'm not saying i forgive sins i'm saying god said he's forgiven no that's not what he said it says, why do such thoughts arise in your hearts? Which is easier to say to the, to the paralytic? <clears throat> your sins are forgiven? Or rise, pick up your mat, and walk. But so that you may know, that you may know the Son of Man has power to forgive sins on earth. The power, honor to forgive sins. I say to you, pick up your mat and walk. And immediately he got up and walked. So Jesus did a physical miracle to show he has the power to do what even the Quran says only God can do, forgive sins. And this is in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 2. You read verses 1 to 12. But then a couple of other things, not just forgive sins. He healed the man, his disease. He was paralyzed. He healed them physically. But then something else. A lot of people miss it. If you read Mark 2, it says they were thinking this in themselves. They didn't say it out loud. They were saying it in their heart. And Jesus says, why do such thoughts arise in your hearts? So Jesus knew what they were thinking in their hearts. Not something they said for people to hear. So Jesus knows what they're thinking in their hearts. He forgives sins and heals diseases. Not only is this amazing. In light of the Quran, it's amazing in light of the Old Testament. Because if you go to Psalm 103, guys, I'm giving you the reference. Psalm 103, verses 2 to 4. Psalm 103, verses 2 to 4, especially verses 2 to 3, it says, Bless Jehovah, bless the Lord, all my soul, right? <clears> oh, <throat> my soul, for all his benefits, who 
forgives you all your sins and heals all your diseases and who redeems your life from the pit. Wait, why should I praise Jehovah? Why should I praise Yahweh? Why should I praise God and love him and praise and worship him? Because he heals my diseases and he forgives my sins, everything Jesus did while he was on earth and he still does in heaven. What else do you want? Old Testament shows that Jesus is claiming to be God and proving it by his miracles. The Quran is acknowledging that Jesus is saying things that only God can say and he's proving it by miracles. So what else do you want Muslims? Uh, this was the Gospel of Mark, not just the Gospel of John. Sam, what about in chapter 3, 49, it says the saying that Jesus, he can't tell you what you store in your house, what you ate. Okay, if uh, 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 Sam, there is, there is 7 billion people in this earth. And now Jesus can tell every one of us what we are hiding in our houses. You tell yeah. me how that can happen. Of course, because he's God in the flesh. I mean, and another way to show that he knows everything and everyone. If you go to Revelation 2, 18, 23, uh, again, it, Jesus says the words of the Son of God. And when he punishes that false prophet is Jezebel. Guys, Revelation 2, 18 and 23. To show you, Jesus is claiming that he knows what everyone's doing. He sees everyone. And he's the one who's giving them life. In Revelation 2, 18 and 23, it says, These are the words of the Son of God. And then at the end, in verse 23, the Son of God says, When I do this to Jezebel, Jezebel's a false prophetess, then the churches will know, then the churches will know that I am he. I am he. There's the words I am again, CP. I am he who searches the hearts and tests the minds to repay everyone according to what he's done. Now, CP, help me understand. Jesus says, I'm the one who knows all the hearts, and I will test all the minds, and I'm the one who's going to repay everyone for what you've done. That's God. Who can do that? Wow. Who can do that? Allah, He cannot do that. You know, when the Muslims uh, accuse Muhammad that he stole an underwear, <laughs> if you remember. And then, uh, and then supposedly Allah, He went to His office, and He sat down, and He decided to make it clear that Muhammad is not the one who stole the underwear. Okay, so Allah, He sent the verse saying, it's not for a prophet and Yahul. It's not for a prophet to be a thief. Why Allah did not tell us who is the thief then? Yes. You know, huh? the verse is so clear. People are accusing Muhammad that he stole. And then the easiest way, if you are God and you are supposed to, you are the one who knows everything, who can see everything in the day of judgment, right? So they ask, they ask him, what kind of a prophet he do that? And they are asking people, they are accusing him, and those are the Muslims. And the Muslim translation, by the way, saying it's not a, a prophet for a false, doesn't say that. It says, Yahul, which means he's not it's a thief. He is a thief, accused to be a thief. So if Allah is a God, as Muslim they claim, then he should make a verse says, Muhammad is not a thief, and go to the house of this guy and get the panty from there. But because the verse actually this one confirm that the real thief is Muhammad because he did not give us that th real thief. So Muhammad he fabricated this verse to cover his 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 his, uh, his his madness of being a thief, he could not resist himself, and they accuse him and just he said and made a verse, it's not for a prophet to be a thief, but why you don't say who is a thief? I yeah. mean this is a very simple test for somebody claim that he is connected to God. Tell them, go to the house of this guy, open the drawer, you will find the panty which you accuse me I took. They will go there, they will find it, it will be an amazing miracle. But making a verse saying, it's not Muhammad who take it, it's a clear proof that number one, if Muhammad is not the one really who stole it, Allah don't know. Number two, obviously Muhammad is the thief for real, and this is why Muhammad, he could not point his finger at anyone, for he knew it is him who took it. Yeah. To add to your point, Sipi, uh, to show that Allah doesn't know everything, because Allah is simply Muhammad's, uh, it's Muhammad, but anyway, in 48.27, I find this funny, in 48, chapter 48, verse 27, it's talking about Muhammad entering, the, the commentators say this, the verse, it's not that clear, mm -hmm. that it says, you will enter into the sacred mosque, but then it says, insha'Allah, this is Allah speaking. Now, uh, CP, help me understand. Allah is telling Muhammad, you're going to enter this year, or you're going to enter yeah, this year. But then he says, inshallah, if Allah wills. So Allah doesn't know if it's his will that Muhammad's going to enter or not. So he has to say, if Allah wills. It's a, it's a disclaimer. <laughs> a disclaimer. So if it doesn't happen, he will say, didn't I say to you, inshallah? Like, what's yeah. wrong with you? <laughs> so, you, you? So Allah, who's supposedly all-knowing, says, you will enter this year if Allah wills. And people don't know why. 
they, that Muhammad had to say, inshallah, even though it's supposedly Allah speaking. Because in the commentaries, you can read Tafsir Ibn Kathir in English, and Sipi knows this. It says that Muhammad had told his followers, we are going to go to do Umrah, we're going to do lesser pilgrimage. So they all got ready. They all got their sacrificial animals, their families, but he was stopped at Hudaybiyah before he could reach. And the pagan said, you're not going to enter this year, next year, but you're going to have to sign this contract, this agreement, treaty. And what was the treaty? If any one of us leave to you, Muhammad, you have to send them back. But if any one of your people return to us, we don't send them back. So Muhammad had to accept the conditions and you won't enter till next year. He goes, okay. And then he wanted to write, sign, Muhammad, Rasulullah, he goes, no, by love, we thought you were God's messenger, we would believe you. So they forced him to say Muhammad ibn Abdullah. So then Umar got upset. Umar got upset and said, hey, ya Rasul, didn't you say we were going to enter Mecca? He goes, yeah, but did I say this year? I didn't tell you this year. <laughs> so wait, Muhammad, you gathered all these people, all the sacrificial elements, and you made them journey to, to Mecca from Medina, and they didn't have buses at that time, so you have to walk. But it wasn't because you expected to, accept, uh, expected to enter that year. You just went there for the heck of it to write a treaty and come back. Yeah. Are you serious? Very, very clear, very clear that Muhammad is a false prophet. And this is what he practiced uh, uh, always. If you remember in chapter 8, verse number 65, 66, where he promised them, that Allah said to him that 120 of you can fight 200, you remember? Yeah. And, and then they went to the war and they lost. And then they, when they came back, he want to cover his, 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 his disaster, lie, promise. So he said, now Allah lighten your task. And now Allah, he found out that you have a weakness. So uh, uh, 100 of you can fight uh, uh, 200 of them. So from 1 to 10 to what? To 1 to 2. I mean, what kind of God he made a promise that if one of you can fight, you see, if God make a promise that I will win against a billion, I will win. I mean, I have God in my side. That's it. I'm, uh, I'm winning. This, it's not my power anymore. So if Allah, he says to them, and this is Quran, chapter 8, verse number 65, 66, how fast does God, he changed the numbers? Either you have to say he found himself wrong. This is too much exaggerating, stupid lie. And it doesn't make sense and they are it's not it's not going to happen and then he decided to uh, correct himself making it more acceptable by saying one to two and you know the number here is the difference is a huge from one yeah. to ten to one to two and you will notice that the condition is the same like muslim cannot say oh in the first verse says uh, you have to be patient and it's it says the same read it carefully oh prophet rose the believers to battle if there is 20 set state fa fast among you, they will defeat. The second verse says the same. If there is a hundred steadfast, so the condition is still the same. It's not like uh, if, if there is a, a, a 20 believers and there maybe there are not enough believers. No, it is the same condition, steadfast. That's all. That's what I required. So nothing changed and the steadfast is the same, but the number changed. So how God, he said that, uh, 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 Sam, did God, he gave victory to Israel before in the Bible, even though they are not qualified? You can find it in the book of Judges where God reduced the soldiers to 300, Gideon, mm -hmm. and in order to show them that the, their victory was from God, not from them. He said, no, I want it to be reduced so that when you defeat this larger army of 10,000, you won't take credit for it. Mm -hmm. You'll know I did it because it's a human impossible. Such a small number can defeat such a large host unless God is there. But again, remember, in Islam, you have Allah, who is actually the alter ego of Muhammad, right? But, yeah, yeah, so, but isn't it but, Muhammad, he said that the angel Jibreel is fighting with him? Oh, yeah. Okay, so, fact, so who care about the 20 and 10 and 50 and 60? Who care about these numbers? If you have an angel with 600 wings and he alone can cover the horizon, this yeah. angel, he can, if he, if he, if we, if we move his wings, he can make the biggest hurricane in the world. He can make the whole army fly. <laughs> and CP, it says in chapter 8, verse 12, it says that he commanded the angels to strike them at their fingertips and their necks. Right. Chapter 8, the same surah you're reading? Right, right. It's not even directed to the Muslims. It's saying, you angels, you're with them. You strike their necks and their fingertips. And yet still with the angels doing that, still 
They did not make it. I wasn't still, you know, strong enough to help the Muslims. Yeah. Oh, but see, but let me add one more point to this because you're All reading right. chapter eight. That was chapter eight, verse 12, guys. Yeah. But it gets even worse. In chapter 8, verse 43, 44, guys, you got to listen to because it's the same chapter. All of this was chapter 8. Chapter 8, 12, it says the angels were there, and he says to the angels, I am with you, I command you, strike their fingertips, their necks. That still wasn't good enough. But in chapter 8, verses 43, 44, it says that Allah showed to Muhammad. Exactly. In a dream, the number of the pagans being very few and small in number, because Allah said, if I had shown you their number, then there would have been fighting among you, you would have been afraid. So I deceived you into making it seem they were fewer, because if I showed you as many, you'd be too scared. So I helped you, <laughs> I lied to you. What a joke. <laughs> yeah, he told them that he saw a dream, and then uh, the dream is telling them that they are few in number, and then when he went, <laughs> and they came back to him and says, but you told us there are only few. What? <laughs> they are not a few. <laughs> so no, the, 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 answer, the answer of Fifi and Mimi is ready. A brother, if I tell you there are many, you will not go anyway. So he's even lying to the Muslims. This is yeah. God himself, Aka Muhammad, lying to the Muslim and they excuse, uh, you know, if I, didn't, if I tell you the truth, he will not do it. See? Who, wow. was, the, who was the father of all lies, Sam? Of Satan and he's the father of Muhammad. Muhammad is his son. Exactly. Muhammad is his son. Because, because God, God, he cannot be the creator of lies. You know, he don't lie, he don't fabricate, he don't he don't do this. God, he said, even Jesus, he forbid us from taking an oath. Either you say yeah, yeah, or nay, nay. Why? Because a person who is decent, why he want to take oath? You know? 100%. Because you know an oath usually is somebody he lie all the time, and now he want to prove that he is decent now. So he, what he do? He use the name of God, right? So, but if you are a liar all the time, I mean, you're using the name of God. Obviously, you don't care for God anyway because you are a liar. If you care for God, you will not lie before. Hundred percent. See, if you have a customer who calls him some homeless shamoon, like he's gonna make me cry, I'm gonna go say. Anyway. He's saying, what do you think of CPIG just revised John 8, 12 by introducing the word God in it? I don't know if this uh, this stone smoocher who licks the black stone like his prophet did is going to answer me because I don't think he's going to call you. Mm. He's too afraid to call you, but I hope he calls you. But if he's honest enough and he's not ashamed of his prophet, even though I'm ashamed of his prophet for him, I want him to tell everyone in the room, is and nur one of the names of his God? Maybe he'll answer in the text because he's very tough on the text. But I'm sure he's not yeah, going to call. But, but what he what he what he mean by saying? I don't understand. Like he's saying, look, he's saying, uh, uh, CP. Uh, uh, he called me pig. Uh, he yeah. reversed John eight twelve by introducing the word God in in in, in it. Yes. He said it says, "I am God, the light of the world." Yes. Well, this is the Aramaic, and it, actually, each time Jesus says, "I am," he is saying, "I am the God of the world." No, and I'm, he's going to prove it. That's why I want him to answer. He's going to prove the translation is right. But I don't think he's going to answer. He's a waste of time. Because once he answers, folks, let me show you why the Aramaic in plain English is capturing the words of Jesus. Let me explain it for you, the benefit of the English speakers. And remember, uh, Sam, he speak Aramaic for those who do not know. Yeah, I want to explain just so they can understand why is it bringing out the words as I am God, the light of the world. It's not because they're adding to Jesus' words or twisting it, because as CP mentioned, the words I am are one of the names of God. And secondly, no one can say I am the light of the world unless you're God. So the Aramaic translation English is capturing the meaning of Jesus' words perfectly. That's why I want to ask him, can you tell us in the text, but he's not going to do it. I know I'm wasting my time, but still, I want him to prove that this translation is valid. I want him to say, An-Nur, the light, is not one of the names of Allah. It's a name you can give to others, because then he's going to commit shirk. And I want him to say that a creature can say, I am the light of the world, when his Quran in chapter 24, verse 35 says, Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth. So for you Christians... This translation of the Aramaic and English is capturing the meaning of Jesus' words. Don't let them deceive you, because only God and God alone can say that He is the light of the world and the source of all light. And CP explained it already, what He means by light. It's not that about sunlight. It means giving you understanding to find your way and to find the truth, illumination. 
Only God can be the source of that light, and only God can say, I'm the light of creation. I know some Muslims will probably say, if they're smart Muslims, oh, but Jesus said the disciples are the light of the world in Matthew 5, 14. Yes and no. The disciples reflect the light of Jesus in them. By what? You know, by, by, because they are, they are preaching his word. This is exactly Thank why, you. you know, that's it. He is the source because Jesus is in them and it's his light shining through them. So they are like the moon reflecting the light of the sun. Jesus is the source because in John 1, 9, it says it. The true light, Jesus Christ, that illuminates all men was coming into the world. And he even says, whoever believes in me shall have the light of life in him. So this stone smoocher, if he's not ashamed of Allah and his messenger, tell us, no, you can call a creature the light and you can call a creature the light of creation and you can say a creature is the source of light you know you're a liar and you won't say it so the aramaic bible perfectly captures the words of jesus and not only that i have a challenge for those muhammadan if somebody in the middle east right now said i am the light of the world what the accusation would be against him thank you he is claiming to be god <laughs> and they, See, and, and in fact you can inform me i remember reading and it's one of my articles around 800s 9th century yeah. there was this sufi muslim named al-halaj right al-halaj al yeah okay when he said anul haq and what did they do to him they kill him why he just said i'm the truth uh, cp what's wrong with you you know uh, you know uh, uh, the second the second you say something any any sentence of Jesus said is qualified for death for any Muslim if he said he is the light he is the resurrection he is the truth those are the names of Allah al help and he is the Alpha he is the uh, Omega uh, I am I, I am the way I am, I am the water I'm the life I am the life I mean who is the life <laughs> I am the I am the life and yet they say to you what he said who is the life Muslims can Muhammad say, can Muhammad say the one who saw me, he saw God? <laughs> no, the one who saw him, they saw Shaitan, they saw Satan. And I, some people don't know what we're referring to. Guys, there was a Muslim Sufi who believed that God could fill you so much that you could be lost. And so he said, I am the truth. And the Muslims killed him for saying that. Why did they kill him? Because they know I am the truth. That's something only God can say. So when he said it, they took it as if he's claiming to be God. But then when he showed Jesus saying, I am the truth. No, he's a prophet. It's stuck for Allah, Rabbil Alameen, alayhi salam. Any, any, any of those claims Jesus he said and the Jews they said clearly he's making himself equal to God I mean they, they did not even if in the front of Jesus they said that they did not say it in his back they said to him he said to them why you are stoning me what 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 the bad I did you, you, you know I did only good work they said that we are not stoning you for the good you did but you for a claiming to be God Hundred percent. Another thing I want to add to show that Jesus claimed to be God. A, ask a Muslim when you do dua, when you pray, can you pray to anyone besides Allah? They'll say no, only Allah. Ah, oh, John fourteen thirteen and fourteen. John fourteen thirteen and fourteen. Jesus says, "You may ask anything in my name, and I will do it, so that the Father will be glorified in the Son. You may ask me in my name, and I will do it." John fourteen thirteen and fourteen. Jesus says, "Make dua to me." Invoke me in my name. When you invoke me, I from heaven will answer you. I from heaven will answer your prayers and I will do the miracles through you when you ask me in my name when I'm in heaven. So Jesus is saying, make dua to me. Ask any Muslim dua. Do you do it to God or to a creature? They'll say God. So if Jesus is a Muslim, why is Jesus saying when I go to the Father, you can ask me in my name and I will do it because for him to answer prayer, he must hear all prayers, which means he's all knowing and he must have the power to answer all prayers. So Jesus is saying, I'm God's son who is equal to the Father who can do what only God does, answer prayer. That's John 14, 13 and 14. And yet the Quran in chapter 40, verse 60, chapter 40, verse 60, the Quran says, call upon your Lord and whoever refuses to do so, worships his Lord, he is arrogant, right? So there you go. What more do you want? Jesus is claiming the things that only God can do.